All right, hi to everybody watching. This is the Content Lead Stand Up, and today Rebecca is going to walk us through um, our editorial Q2 results. Thanks, Erica. Um, let me share my screen. So you should all be looking at an issue uh, FY21 Q2 blog traffic review. Um, this is based on a spreadsheet that I put together, which is linked to from the issue if you want to dive really deep into the data. Um, it's put together a little bit manually at the moment. We're figuring out if there's a way to automate some of this, but essentially this is just all of the blog posts published throughout the quarter. Um, we add in for our own purposes the source and the function which is just kind of who at gitlab has like where has this originated from within gitlab what sort of purpose is it serving on the blog and then the category um, you can see on each blog post and then we use a two-month window um, to calculate the sessions this is just because there's no simple way to um, sort by or filter by you know, one month from date of publishing, there's no way to do that kind of automatically on Google Analytics. So we just use a two month window to give posts time to accumulate page views if they were published at the end of a calendar month, for example. So that's the sheet. There's a tab here with a pivot table where you can see blog posts sorted from most trafficked to least. Um, and uh, this is all kind of distilled in this traffic review here, which I will go through briefly now as well but I'm going to pause in case there are any questions so far. Okay, um, so the top level numbers, um, you can, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is a quarter over quarter increase though that's reflected here. Um, we're not looking at year over year in this review. Um, the way I've kind of done it this way is just to make sure like, even though you can see we've got an increase from the previous quarter, um, this is looking specifically at blog posts published during the quarter. Um, so we may be getting traffic and growth from previous blog posts, but um, I want to focus on what we're spending time on day to day to make sure that right now the things that we are producing that are kind of net new are helping us meet our goals. Um, so then we've got um, the top 10 posts, which the most interesting thing for me is that like this accounts for 71.6% of all of that traffic um, to, to net new posts in the month, which means um our top 10 posts are doing most of the work for us so there are some takeaways here um community related posts um are often big hitters for us i think that's because we have the the kind of um momentum from the community sharing that news as well in addition to us just kind of tooting our horn about something um and then uh yeah the the so sorts of posts that tend to do well uh, on a regular basis, Kubernetes, CICD, those are always kind of big hitters. Um, this Rust programming language is an interesting one. This was kind of experimental from Val. Um, GitLab doesn't really have a uh, skin in the Rust game, as it were, like it's kind of um, tangential to what GitLab does um, as a product and a company. So it's, it's good to see that our audience is interested in stuff that's kind of just industry related. Um, sorry, I realize I'm, I'm speaking quite fast. If you want to like jump in at any point with questions or comments, uh, feel free. Um, but otherwise I'll just keep going through. Um, yeah, just one, uh, one comment yeah. on the, the rest one. I think that's super interesting because it's something we've been talking about a lot in terms of our editorial strategy where, you know, we're trying to migrate away from everything being so GitLab focused to really focus on topics that are trendy or timely for our audience mm -hmm. so to me it's really encouraging to see that do so well and that people thought like hey i trust gitlab on this topic um even though it has nothing to do with their product like it's a really affirming result to see um and i'm excited to see like the strategy that you set for q3 which i think incorporates a lot more posts like this and um, see what those results are, but it's a really good early indicator um, of that strategy working. Yes, yeah, um, and yeah, it's ex exciting to see like we um, we have kind of credibility to to speak about stuff that's in in the same field as it were, but um, isn't like directly GitLab related. Um, so lots of potential there. Um, the um, 
the other stuff that uh, shows up again and again on our top 10 is just like kind of tutorial posts and um, things that explain how we did something. So how we migrated application servers, like those sorts of engineering stories um, from, from our engineering org uh, that other people can learn from uh, are always reflected in our most popular posts. So there's nothing hugely surprising here. The only outlier I think would be that the Rust story, we, we didn't realize that was gonna be as big a hit as it was, um, and that's really encouraging. So um, moving on to posts that got fewer than a thousand sessions, that's kind of our baseline expectation. If we publish a blog post and it doesn't get more than a thousand sessions in the quarter, we then look at that and say, okay, what did we do wrong here? Is it just a topic that's not interesting to our audience? Was the angle not optimized for our audience? Um, kind of, yeah, just why why didn't it get as much traction as we expected? So I've grouped okay, these into categories. Uh, yeah. question. These yeah. 42 posts, do they include unfiltered or are they just blog, branded blog posts? No, that's that's something that's good to call out. These are posts that the editorial team worked on, not including unfiltered posts that went straight to unfiltered and did not get republished. Um, we might include unfiltered posts that were then edited by us and republished on the main blog because we identified them as one that would be a good fit for the main blog. Um, but these are ones that all went through the, the editorial process. Um, so I've grouped these into kind of loose categories to, to see what we can take away from that. Um, we have a number of promotional announcements, which um, we have tried to do a kind of work on this uh, in recent months to, to sort of document some best practices, um, to make sure that we're offering our audience something that's kind of more valuable than just tooting our own horn about something that happened at GitLab that we think is amazing, but we haven't really translated for our audience and what it means for them. Um, we've we've been a bit more rigorous in those reviews and trying to apply those practices but i think the the effect um while overall positive isn't having a huge impact on the the actual traffic so to spend less time on posts that don't get us lots of traffic um we're going to be applying more of just like a light proofreading kind of uh service to those posts as it were um, just to, to make sure that we are optimizing how we spend our time and we're, we're spending the most time on the, the most, um, uh, the, well, the, the posts that get us the most results. Um, so that is something that I will be documenting in our handbook as like a change in strategy um, taking away from this. Um, then uh, we have uh, what I call operational announcements where it's kind of, it's not really sharing anything that's like, a promotional about GitLab, but it's it's purely just a, it's more of a comms exercise, like we need to get this information out to users, they need to know about a deprecation or some kind of change that affects them. Um, those need to exist somewhere, obviously, for people to be able to, to hear about it or for um, uh, team members to communicate with users, but um, they aren't drawing a lot of traffic or attention on their own. So we will apply the, and we already kind of do apply the same principle where it's just like, we're just there to proofread, um, to make sure that it's formatted correctly, et cetera. And, and uh, we will be working on kind of separating those out from our editorial posts as part of this issue that's linked here. I'm gonna give it a beat for any questions or comments. Otherwise I'm gonna move on because I realize we're running out of time quickly. Um, this uh, section was kind of interesting because even though we have some tutorial and how to and um, some uh, kind of practical content here. Um, these didn't do well. Um, uh, the thing that uh, sticks out to me is that almost all of them have GitLab in the title, so it is very kind of inward focused, which may be less interesting to others. Um, I think the um, I, I noted in the previous review that um, we should maybe be more selective and uh, kind of only focusing on the sort of big hitters um, when we do feature posts and kind of saving that for things that have been highly requested um, or are extremely popular with the community. Um, and it's possible that some of them just needed a headline tweak to make it kind of less inward focused. Um, so I gave the example here of like 
how GitLab CAI helps solve common DevSecOps challenges. Um, you know, that there, we don't necessarily need to make it about GitLab CI in the title, it could be about CI in general, and then you have an example about GitLab in, in, the, in the post itself. Um, the, this kind of year in review roundup, um, we have already documented a suggestion for how to do those better because those kind of come up from within GitLab, but I think our audience is kind of just less thirsty for what GitLab has been doing for the past year without kind of making it uh, clear how this is uh, useful to them and why they would want to know. I so, just, uh, yeah. The thought I have on those, on the GitLab focus, like feature posts, I do feel like there's an opportunity here to explore with Dan Gordon and the technical marketing managers, um, mm -hmm. whether it's getting some of the video content and things included and making a bigger deal out of them, or, you know, taking these posts to them and seeing if it makes sense in the, like, the learn environment that they're creating. Not that we would you know, make it our job to start creating that content, but maybe there's a new place where we can repurpose some of this that hasn't done well. But I feel like there's yes. more to investigate in that one. That one's super interesting to me. Yeah. Um, and this, I, I breezed over this, but I think it is important to, to mention here, like some of this sort of um, content that's just about GitLab capabilities, it feels like just straight marketing material where it is, and it might just be it's in the wrong home. Um, uh, and like we do something, you know, different to highlight those capabilities if it's a blog post, but if you, you just want to like expand on the functionality or something like it, it could be like, as you say, in the learn environment or on the, you know, the product or feature page that's, that's relevant to that. Um, and, uh, this is like ongoing work for, for me, it's just figuring out like, is this a blog post or is this something else? Um. So yes, uh, that's I will take that as an action item to connect with Dan. Um, then uh, we had a DevSecOps series, which um, overall didn't have a strong performance. Um, I know that we have the web article format coming soon, so it's possible that some of these might have been better suited to that format because it's sort of like foundational knowledge or you know just basics, and it's there's not necessarily anything timely or opinionated about it. Um, uh and then uh, yeah i just compared it to we had the guide to ci cd for, for beginners that did really take off for us but that is on ci cd which is a, a known popular topic um so yeah uh and we just say i jotted down my um sort of uh theories and hunches about why some of these things did or didn't do well um if anyone has uh, sort of their own suggestions they're welcome to add them to this issue um we are almost Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, could you say that again? I was going to say, I would be, it, the DevSecOps series is one that I think we should test with some paid social behind, because I have a untested theory that maybe we just haven't attracted an audience that is interested in this topic, um, mm -hmm. and to see what happens to those sessions if we do some paid social and targeting. Um, if that makes a difference, if, if maybe tell us a little bit about, is it the content or the audience? Because we do want this audience. Um, mm. So I'm going to actually take that to Matt Lynn, um and see if we can do some paid around those. And we'll, we'll come back in two months and see what happens. Okay, great. Um, we are at time, so I'm happy to keep going. Uh, Erica, we'd be running into our one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm okay to go over if we want to keep going. I'm good to wrap up here. Yeah, why don't you finish up? Okay. Um, so then just the, the last few, um, we had insights, thought leadership. That was my kind of loose category for these. Um, I said there were some surprises here, and I, I don't necessarily have a good explanation. Um, I think possibly something that could have affected um, traffic to posts that we would expect to do well is um, we obviously paused for paused publishing for three weeks in June, um, which created a bit of a backlog, which we then cleared in July, but then created kind of a bottleneck on the social distribution side. And that is where most of our initial traffic comes from. So it's possible that um, there was just a bit too much crowding around some of these posts um, and uh, they didn't get the attention that they would normally get. So um, 
I've uh, put some suggestions down here as well, but that is my, my kind of overall theory as to, to why some of these I'm surprised by. And um, same with the engineering and tutorials, because this is usually a good um, uh, kind of uh, format for us. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's, it, it possibly got affected by that, that kind of backlog um, and then sort of publishing two or three times a day in the aftermath. Um, then the DIB series, um, I think uh, we just haven't figured out kind of where GitLab's unique angle in covering this is. Um, it was obviously important to publish this first one, which did a little bit better. Um, but I, my sort of challenge to our team going forward is sort of what, what is GitLab bringing that's new to this conversation or that we are uniquely positioned to talk about. Um, and my suggestion here is like with the remote work stories, um, there might be kind of a, a sort of engineering angle or just like a kind of data analysis angle that's, um, yeah, I'm open to suggestions, but uh, um, I think we, we can see that there isn't a strong interest from our current audience for, for these from us at the moment. Um, and then I just had a note here uh, about SEO because um, we're uh, focusing on our SEO efforts as well because some of these, uh, a lot of these posts will have a long tail uh, of um, traffic for us, hopefully if we have search uh, engine optimized them. Um, so this is obviously just a snapshot of the past quarter, but we see posts that do well uh, kind of uh, many quarters or even years after they're published. And we want to make sure that we're spending time both on net new posts and on optimizing past posts so that they just keep working for us. So I am a little bit out of breath. That's, uh, that's my overview of this. Um, and I can share um, the, the link to this issue if anyone's interested. And also um, here in the related issues, there is um, the previous quarter's traffic review as well, if anyone wants to compare. Questions, thoughts? I don't have any more questions, Bree. Um, I do have one question, and it's just a question of whether or not we might be doing ourselves a disservice by looking so closely at, like, why not review, say, Q4's traffic now? Because then you've given, like, six months or more to the existing traffic. Like, you've said that we've started to implement more C SEO stuff. So I'm curious about if you've thought of looking at older content to see how well it's performed um, with a six month timeline. Yes, um, so one of my hopes, and I, I'm working with um, Danielle and Shane on getting, uh, kind of sort of wrapping our heads around what we need to be looking at and when, so that I can then hopefully one day have a dashboard that kind of surfaces a lot of that information for me because um, yeah, some posts do well long after they're published and we want to make sure that we're aware of those. Um, the, the purpose of just doing this quarterly one for now in, in the most recent quarter is just like we need to make sure day by day that we're spending time on, on, on what matters. And so to look at the most recent stuff just means like, you know, we can, we can pivot quickly. Um, and if we're only kind of getting data sort of six months after the fact, that's uh, like, Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm explaining this this very well, but um, just like uh, this is, are, are we learning from what we've been doing most mm -hmm. recently versus what we were doing six months ago? We need to be looking at both is the answer, I think. But um, I I'm not quite set up with a, a dashboard that surfaces all of that information just yet. So um, it's a it's an active work in progress. And we do a 12 month review at the end of the year. So there's the quarter reviews and then 12 month review. I think it'd be great to get to a point where we're doing it every six months. I think like what Rebecca just said, the process is so manual right now um, that doing it quarterly, which I do think we should do for all the reasons Rebecca just described, plus a twice a year, six month review is just a lot to do without tools and automation. Yeah. I'm just curious. Thank you. But it's, yeah, I mean, we definitely want to get to that point. Um, we just need some help on the tooling side. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. Um,
but uh, yeah, if, if anything comes to you after this meeting and you've had a chance to peruse, just feel free to leave it uh, on the issue there and I'll start that merge request to get the takeaways added to the handbook.